guys, it's Liz Irene. Welcome back to my channel. So today I just want to like hop right into this video because I figure it's really important, especially for my channel, especially for what I'm doing right now. And I guess who I am as a person, it's really important. Although this doesn't necessarily define me, I think that it's really important to share with you guys because this is like my life. This is kind of what I'm sharing. And I think it's really important to just get like a backstory kind of before I jump further into things and before I post more things. Um, I definitely think it's a story to tell you guys. Oh my gosh, this eye keeps watering. Stop, 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 stop. Be cool for like 20 minutes. So today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I found out that I was going blind, how I found out that I was losing vision, basically how I was diagnosed with my eye condition and everything. Because leading up to this day, it's kind of something that definitely came on without warning. It's affected my life and it will continue to affect my life because there is no cure for it. So I'm just gonna hop right into this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy and learned a little bit more kind of about my condition and things like that. And maybe it kind of recaps like my later teen years into like early adulthood. So I think it's really important. So, so yeah, let's go ahead and just, just go. Let's just, let's just jump into the story. So I'm just going to start with like the backstory, how I found out, like kind of the warning signs that I was getting, um, things like that, because it definitely was a very confusing time in my life. I was, I think 15 when I was diagnosed. So that's just a tricky age in general. Um, it's a very like fragile time in your life. I feel like when you're growing up and you're a teenager and just there's so much craziness going on. So I had 20, 20 vision my whole life, um, up until I was 15, 14. Um, and my parents have glasses, my siblings, they have glasses. Um, and I was the one child who was like, you know what? I have 20, 20 vision. This is great. This is awesome. But little did I know that I wouldn't have. I would end up not having correctional vision at all. So these are kind of the warning signs when I found out that something was kind of up with my vision. My freshman year of high school, I could always get away with kind of sitting in towards the back of the classroom, reading notes, stuff like that. So until I kind of remembered that in my history class, which was one of the classes that we were primarily taking notes on, I needed to look at the board a lot more. I noticed that I just, I just couldn't see as well. I remember telling my teacher to like zoom in a little bit more on the notes because it's like those, put the paper down and it's like a camera and it zooms in on like the notes. And I remember telling her to like zoom it in a little bit more because I couldn't I was having a hard time reading, but I could still kind of read. So we were taking notes one day and a peer actually took a picture of me, showed it to me towards the end of class and was like, you're squinting really bad. Like you were squinting terribly bad when we were taking notes um, and you looked like this and just like shoves the phone in my face. And I looked terrible. I looked like I was just lost. I looked like I couldn't see at all. I was very embarrassed at that point And I guess I was like, wow, you know, I can't really see the board as well. So I, went home and I took it up with my parents that I wasn't, you know, seeing the board correctly. So we went to the eye doctors, tried to get eyeglasses, said we'd try them out for a couple weeks, come back, see how they work. So during that time period, I noticed that they weren't working right away. I was still squinting. I still couldn't read anything. And I was in English class. This was probably when it kind of hit me the most and I was getting really frustrated. So we used to take Scantron tests and of course you have to fill in the bubble. And for me looking at it now, it's very small. And I noticed when I was taking tests in this English class that I was marking the correct answers, but I was marking them in all the wrong orders. So I would completely skip number one and I'd go down to number two and start filling in like number one's answer. When I got my test back, it looked like, so I had missed number one and I had missed all of them because I had them, they were just all down a row, if that makes sense. So I was really frustrated. I don't think the teacher let me retake that test. The second time I had to take a Scantron test, I just couldn't do it. I tried to take the test. I was like starting out. I could barely read the packet. I had so many erase marks because I halfway through the test, I just noticed that I was messing up. It was getting very, very frustrating. I remember I just sat there the last half of class. I'm not even kidding. I just sat there. I like gave up. I just set the test there. I looked at it, I was so frustrated, I was done trying. My teacher comes up to me and he was like, you gotta finish your test. And I was like, I can't, I think I was borderline about to cry. And I remember he was like, you don't finish this test, you know, I'm gonna call your dad. And I was like, I'm not finishing this test. I was so overwhelmed and I was so confused. He ends up calling my dad, telling him that I was refusing to take my test. And I think that's where I was kind of like, I didn't understand what was going on. I was a really, really good student in high school. I've never failed a class in my life. I always had very good grades, A's and B's. Academically, I was always 
there and it was a very confusing time because in that class I had actually had like a C and I was I thought it was like the end of the world so I went home and I was basically telling my parents that these glasses that they had given me that were prescription lenses weren't working so then we went back for a second pair and if you guys you know people with insurance things like that when you get prescription glasses you're typically only covered one pair a year so I was on pair number two and that that was expensive so my parents had to pay out of pocket for those lenses, those prescriptions. And I was kind of like, these aren't gonna work and they didn't work at all. After like kind of being very frustrated in school and frustrated with the second pair of eyeglasses, the ophthalmologist that we went to at the local place basically told me that my options were slim and that I needed to go to an eye specialist because they couldn't figure out what was wrong. I think at that point he had determined that I did have like an astigmatism, but it wasn't anything to do with that. So I went to an eye specialist. I was about to turn 15 because I got diagnosed in the fall. Yeah, I think that's when I got diagnosed. I went to this specialist one day and my dad was primarily the one who was taking me to these appointments. My dad has an eye condition too as well. I'll ask him what it is. I'll link it down below. You guys can read up on that, but it has nothing to do with my eye condition that I have now. He was just more of like the person who could kind of empathize with me and understand that like what the hell is going on with my eyeballs. So my dad went to all of my appointments with me and I remember I went to the appointment with a specialist for the first time and it was just awful. <laughs> they did all the kind of standard stuff that they do at a typical eye appointment. And then he basically told me that, you know, something was up. They dilated my eyes and looked at the back of my eyes and was like, something's kind of, you know, something's kind of up. So we scheduled appointments out. He booked me for a bunch of tests that I needed to do. And that's when I kind of thought that like, whoa, this is, this is more than just eyeglasses. This is more than just like anything. And I was, it was very stressful. I took off a lot of days of school. My dad took off, you know, so many days of work and went with me to these eye appointments. And it was just all, all to get answers. And you just go there and you take the test and you don't know what's wrong necessarily. So they did a range of things. They wanted blood work from me. They wanted, um, you know, photos of my eyes. They actually did this test where they run an IV through your arm and they just um, inject dye into you. And then they take these really bright pictures of your eyeballs just so they can see the blood flow in your eyes and kind of how everything's working in there and I'm gonna insert some of like the pictures these aren't my pictures um, but just some of like the pictures that they look like when they take those really bright pictures so they did that I did an ECG yeah I think I did an ECG so they just literally attach you up to a bunch of wires um, they have a wire that lays across your water line they make you sit in a dark room for an hour and then they just start doing like it's it's like a focus test it was really hard I cried they kept yelling at me to stay still and I just couldn't do it but a visual field test like so many different things and at this point I was done being a test dummy and I was done not knowing what was wrong with me so that was super super frustrating I think I took all these tests in a matter of like two three months so we went to our scheduled appointment where I would basically figure out like what's the diagnosis what's wrong with I'm like getting emotional because this is actually the first time that I've actually told this story like start to finish I sat in the room with my dad it was super quiet so my ophthalmologist came back he basically had a bunch of papers he didn't show me any of my test results which I'll get into later for a future idea but reading these papers off and reading kind of my scores if you will of all my tests basically told me that because my visual field test which I had no central vision it's where you sit there and you look straight it's like a dome in front of you it's like a dome and you stare straight at basically the intercept but you look straight ahead and red dots will pop up and you need to click a button every time you see a red dot in your peripheral vision. Um, sometimes they'll move the dots inward and in my case I couldn't see them so it mapped out where I had a blind spot. So, so this is where he finally gave it a name and told me that I had Stargardt's disease. At first I was like what the hell is that? You know I've never heard of it before I didn't know what it was. I think it's like one in ten thousand or one in I can't remember but it's kind of rare. He also explained that when they took the really bright pictures of my eyes that my rods and cones and basically my macula which is where it's affected in the back of my eye was um that the cells were dying and i had some dead cells already and when they took the picture of your eyes it basically kind of shows you a spot where there is no light where there is nothing and normally the cells are lit up but mine were just you know dead in that area and if you guys have stargarts and you're watching this you can relate to you know what i'm talking about but that's kind of the easiest way that i could explain it is is that I have no central vision, I'm losing central vision. I wasn't legally blind yet, but I wasn't at 20-20 anymore. And I think at that point my blind spot was small. So he wanted to see me about six months later. So 
I was going to the eye doctor twice a year for about a year and a half. After I was diagnosed, I went home and I cried because he had also explained to me that, you know, there was no cure for it. Of course, there's like resources and things like that. And he told me it is very rare for people to go completely blind and that I would find a, a point in my vision where I would plateau, but still you would be losing, you would lose the ability to see things. And that's where it kind of like, I don't know, it just made me super, super sad. I thought it was so crazy, especially because I had 20-20 vision my whole life. And now I'm gonna have, you know, terrible vision and not be able to like see things. So I feel like if I was younger and I was diagnosed, I wouldn't be as emotional, but mind you, I was 14, 15 years old and I had failed my learner's permit because I couldn't pass the visual test. I, I was gonna undergo all these changes that they were talking about and I wouldn't notice it, you know, I'm not gonna wake up one day and just notice, hey, I'm blind. It happened so gradually that now I know like where my blind spot is. I notice it, I know that I can't see very well. And I get really sad and like bummed out about not being able to see things or not being able to like see loved ones' faces from like, farther away or sometimes I have a hard time like identifying faces or just feeling like a lack of just feeling like you don't have as much independence anymore was something that hurt really bad because I have always kind of been like an independent person and you, so that's kind of where I figured out that I was going blind so I went to a follow-up appointment six months later and this is where I didn't understand how how fast your body could change on you. So I went to that follow-up appointment and that's where I found out that I was legally blind. Um, so from squinting and still kind of being able to read things and then six months later to going up to my follow-up appointment, I went legally blind in a span of about six months. So whatever you guys can see, 200 feet away, I have to see 20 feet in front of me. It just sounded really crazy because I've never heard of numbers like, like that. It's always, you know, 20 over 20, 20 over 30. So at that point, I've kind of stuck at 20 over 200 for a couple years now. And I'm going back to the eye doctor in March. And I think my vision's changed a little bit because now that I'm more like self-aware, I know that things have changed a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. That's like a whole other story in itself. So that was me being diagnosed, that was like the medical side of things. Now, transitioning from that diagnosis into high school, like I said, guys, this was a very, very fragile time in my life. And I think even up until my senior year, I was still trying to like learn who I was. I was still trying to figure out like the odds and ends of being visually impaired and how to accommodate for myself and how to advocate for myself because I've never had to do that before. And I know a lot of people think that high school is like the highlight of their lives and that, you know, it's so fun. And although you do make really good memories, for me personally, I hated high school. I hated it. I hated it. I would never want to relive my high school days because it was just so rough for me. And I don't really think I've ever opened up with anyone and really expanded on that. But it was hard for me. I wasn't one to like go to school. And the way I went by through high school was like, wake up, go to school, make sure I'm getting accommodated, do my homework, pass my classes, like go home. And of course I had like friends and stuff. Um, if anyone's watching this now and they know me and I, I seemed like I was super inconsistent in high school, that's just, it just sucked for me. I just hated it. It was especially hard because after I was diagnosed, I had a team of visual impairment specialists. They were teachers who, you know, work with people who are visually impaired in the school system. And I went to this room um, and they were basically like, I don't know, they were basically telling me about how I'm going to need tools and techniques and things like that to kind of like help me with my academic life and being in high school. And I... I was super, I was such a grouch about it. I didn't want help at all. I was super, I look back at it and I feel really, really bad. Um, Cause for the first like year I was super stubborn. I was like, I don't need help. I don't want help. Mind you, I was just diagnosed. So I didn't necessarily even know what was going on with myself, let alone, you know, did other people know? This was all just, it was, it was, it was just overload, but it was now like looking back on it now, it's good overload. But at the time I was like, no. So the next chapter into being visually impaired and being in high school was I had a mobility teacher for about a year. And this is kind of where I feel like my peers really noticed it. They weren't really, they didn't know anything about, you know, an IEP or my accommodations or things like that. They just knew that you know, I was always sitting in the front of the classroom and that I was getting notes from my teachers and stuff ahead of time, but they didn't understand it visually. They didn't really see it. 
So I remember I had to go to mobility. I did it for a year, but I think I went sophomore to junior year. I did mobility and I got a cane from my vision specialist. On mobility lessons, I would utilize my cane. I would use it and I would walk around, you know, on campus at school and look perfectly normal and use this cane around my peers. And this was, oh, this was so embarrassing. I would use my cane and I would walk around outside, um, like on campus. And of course, tons of people are coming in and out of school um, nonstop. And of course, there are people who would see me later in the day without my cane, just like normally in class. And they, they would just tell me like, you have a cane? Like, is, can you see me? And like, how many fingers am I holding up? And like, that's when the attention really drew to me. And I was like, no, it was embarrassing. It was hard. A lot of kids when you're in high school, I mean, let's be real. Not a lot of them are very, not a lot of them really care. Not a lot of them are very empathetic. So fast forward to now, um, I'm 20. Like I said, I'm going back in March to the eye doctor to kind of see where my vision's at, my annual checkup. And, you know, I think my vision's changed a little bit. Obviously it hasn't gotten better, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. I actually think that it would be a very, very fun idea to film me going to the eye doctor in March um, and just like a take you with me to the eye doctor. I would like to visually see like my test results because I mean I've had Stargardt's now for like six years almost and I've never seen the test results. I've never seen like the pictures of my eyes that they've taken or anything like that. I just remember them telling me. So that's just kind of how I found out that I was going blind. I will continue to possibly lose my vision as the years go on. I said, I think it's gotten a little worse over the past year, but it's nothing that I can't handle. I live a very happy and fun life with low vision. Nothing's holding me back at all. So it's not like I'm miserable. I'm really happy with how far this change in my life has brought me. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said, if you guys have any more questions regarding my eye disease, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.